The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Natali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, land of Zebulun and land of Natali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he, walked, as he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. So, we, we tend to have a tendency, the same tendency that the Corinthians had, that St. Paul was so saddened, was so distressed to hear what was that tendency with the Corinthians. Division, division, right? We tend to create factions, cliques, groups, and then create unnecessary division. Right? And so we feel like sometimes that forms our identity. When does this start? Probably in grade school. Right? In grade school, there's always different groups, different cliques, different, and that, and then it's more apparent in high school, right? You've got the jocks, the cheerleaders, the geeks, the nerds, whatever, right? The freaks. And so how, that's how it is. We just tend to create different groups, different factions, and division. If you don't belong to our group, then you're not one of us. It's us versus them mentality. That's what St. Paul heard about the Corinthians. They were divided. It was a small local church, yet they were divided among themselves. Some were saying, I belong to Apollos. Some said, I belong to Paul. Some said, no, I belong to Cephas. Somebody else said, I belong to Christ. Right? And so Paul was saying, what are you doing? Was I crucified for you? Why are you making me a savior? Right? I am just an instrument of Christ. We all belong to Christ. Don't create unnecessary divisions among yourselves. And, but that's what we tend to do as a society, right? We find identity with a group, and then if you don't belong to our group, then you're not one of us. Just even in the church, there are divisions, right? There are those who are more progressive and liberal, and then there are those who are more conservative and traditional. They're, already there's division. Those who love Pope Francis, those who <laughs> don't care for Pope Francis, right? And so on. Some people like Father Tran. <laughs> Some people like Father Joe. And it's okay. But we create unnecessary divisions, don't we? And that what's, that's what Paul was so saddened, right? And so even in politics, right? Republicans, Democrats, and so on, we create unnecessary division and animosity and friction, right? And we need to remember our true identity. We're all children of God. We're all really part of Christ, right? He is our identity. We shouldn't hold on to anybody as, as our leader. Our leader should be Christ, right? We, we make instruments into saviors, 
right? Like Paul said, I, I was not crucified for you. Don't turn me into the Messiah, right? So regardless of the priest, whatever personality that you like, don't be attached to him, right? See beyond the priest. Who is the most important person at Mass? Jesus. Jesus. So regardless of the personality of the priest, the homily, the music, Christ is present. Right? Some people leave the church because the preaching is boring. No. Stay because it's a sacrament. Right? The sacrament means so much more. Even if you're not edified by the preaching, you're fed by the sacrament. You're fed by the word of God. You're fed by the body and blood of Christ. You need to see beyond that. Right? So don't let personalities, instruments affect your relationship with Christ. Don't create unnecessary divisions among yourselves either. You need to break down those barriers and go deeper than that. And that's what Jesus is calling us to, to follow him, to leave our past behind, to leave these frictions, divisions behind, and to reconcile, unity, be one. That's what God wants. There's this common theme with God, right? It's about reconciliation. It's about unity. It's about harmony, forgiveness, charity. Conversely, what does the devil want? Division, exactly. When we divide, we play into the hand of the devil. He loves that. And we see this everywhere, among families, among spouses, among friends, among coworkers, among churchgoers. There's always division, misunderstanding, and the devil loves it. He wins when we play into his hand. God is always about forgiveness, reconciliation, humility, oneness, rather than division, discord, and disunity, which is the MO of the devil. And so Jesus calls us, just like he's calling the apostles here, follow me. Follow the light. Leave the past behind. Leave the conflict. Leave the sin, the selfishness, the division behind and follow me. But do we hear him? Do we have access to his voice? Do we hear him calling us to leave our sinful past behind and to follow him to, to unity, to fullness of life? He, he has plans for us. Some of you who go to church can hopefully hear him through the word of God and through the preaching. But we also need to hear God through prayer. If you don't pray, you're not going to hear him calling you specifically to certain things, to leaving things behind and moving forward, to making progress, to advance, to grow. Right? Many people, Catholics, don't go to Mass anymore. They don't hear him calling, talking to them, inviting them to leave the past behind and to move forward, to repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. That's what he's calling us, to repent, to leave our sinful past behind and to move forward. But many people do not hear him. Even those who do hear him may not really hear him, right? Because if, you're, if you don't have the right disposition, if you're not open, then what I'm saying to you may go in one ear and go out the other. Some of you may be, even in the back, maybe even looking at your phone. I don't know. Right? You, could be, you, can, you can be completely distracted. You may be physically here for one hour, but not even, not even emotionally or spiritually present. Am I right? You could tune out completely, right? You could be thinking of something else, the Super Bowl next week, whatever, <laughs> right? So we need to hear Jesus just like the apostles in order to respond. And look at how they respond. They responded immediately. And, and that's the, the, the surprising thing, is that whatever Jesus calls us to do, he gives us the grace. And so when he's calling us to leave our past behind, he gives us the grace to do that, to stop the division, to mend brokenness, and to move forward. And he gives us the grace. But we have to be, to be receptive, open, and allow his grace to work in us. And then we respond. That's our part. Once we hear the invitation, the call, then it's up to us to respond. And then we look at the apostles and how they responded, right? Immediately, 
They didn't say, can I think about that? Can we just talk it over with our dad? No. They dropped everything. Their livelihood. They were fishermen. This is what they did for a living. And they, they even left their father, their family, for Jesus because he calls them. So it was a huge sacrifice for them. It, it took courage. It took generosity to say, I'm leaving my livelihood, my life, my family for you. And so that's what, and that's up to us, how we are called to respond as well. He's calling us to leave our sinfulness, our selfishness, our division behind and to move forward. But are we willing to respond? Are we ready to respond? Or are we saying, I don't know. I don't want to forgive yet. I don't want to mend this relationship. I don't want to move on. It's up to each and every one of us. So the disciples, the apostles, responded immediately and completely. Completely. Right? And that's up to us. You know, I know people who are still talking to their ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend on the phone, communicating with them without their spouse's knowledge. I know somebody who, they, and they don't want to stop. They, is, it, is it okay to, to flirt with your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend while you're married? No. I know people who've had affairs and they still keep in contact with that person. Is that right? No. Right? Jesus is calling you to stop it, to move on, to let go. Right? So block that person. Just block them. End the relationship. Don't play with fire. You're, you're putting your marriage at risk. You're putting your family in harm. Right? Don't do that. Stop it. It's sinful. It's wrong. Stop it so that you can move on. But most people, some people don't. They don't want to let go. They're still attached to their ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, the person they had an affair with. Right? Jesus is calling them to let go and to move on. But they won't. They can't. They refuse to. Right? So, that, so I don't know what division, what sinfulness, what tendency that you have that Jesus is calling you to leave behind. Right? But there's something. All of us, he's calling us to leave behind and to move on. So it's up to us to respond. Immediately or wholeheartedly or reluctantly and unwillingly. So it's up to us. Because why? Because he has plans for us. Something bigger than ourselves. Right? He's calling the apostles to be fishers of men. And so likewise, he's calling us too. To be, it, to be his witnesses in the world, to build God's kingdom on earth, to proclaim the gospel message, to share in, in, in spreading the light and the good news. Right? It's something bigger and beyond ourselves. So once we're able to leave the past, the sin, the division behind, we can move forward and be God's instruments in the world to bear witness to him, to proclaim the good news, to be his light in the world. He has plans for each and every one of us, just like the apostles. He wants each and every one of us to be fishers of men, to bring kingdom, his kingdom uh, on earth, to bring others to him, to build up the church, not to create division. So, as we receive the Eucharist, let us give thanks to the Lord for revealing to us through St. Paul our tendencies towards division and faction and cliques. And then listen to Jesus' call to leave that behind, a call to unity in Christ. So let us ask for the grace to respond completely and wholeheartedly so that we may become the, the, the person that he created us to be and to bear witness to Christ in the world.